Hi guys and welcome back. Today I'm working on this watercolor painting which is actually accidentally going to be a part one of a two-part series of paintings. So what I did is I completely got the week wrong for the YouTube Artist Collective. I'll talk about that next week because that's the actual date of it but but anyways I I planned this piece out, I got it done, and then I looked at the date and realized that it was actually for next week, but instead of deciding to wait on showing you this piece, I decided that I wanted to do a two-parter. I had actually sketched out an idea for something completely differently, actually. It was a different project, but I had sketched out an idea and I really got excited about the idea of doing these two pieces together, taking the things that I really loved about this particular one and exploring it a little bit more with this other concept. So, so yes, make sure to stay tuned for next week for the official YouTube Artist Collective video where you can see the part two of this and you can see how I adapt it to a different idea as well. But, but anyways, we can go ahead and talk a bit about this one. So, so it's kind of funny because I, uh, I was really procrastinating working on this piece for a while because I, I couldn't quite settle on how I wanted to interpret the theme. And it's funny because I was obviously <laughs> extra early rather than late, but but I thought it was late. And the the actual concept for it was phobia. So that is the idea behind this piece as well. But I, I couldn't settle. I had had a few ideas that I had bounced around and it just didn't really settle with me. It just didn't feel like an idea that I felt inspired by or something that I really wanted to continue with. So I let weeks go by and then it ended up being almost a couple months where I just hadn't gotten down to an idea. And I I know it's terrible, but I, I've definitely found that when I, when I put things off like this and I kind of procrastinate it, sometimes those end up being the ideas that I'm most excited by. And I know that because when I went to school that happened pretty frequently where I would sometimes be working on something and then it didn't turn out right or I just didn't give it thought until that very last week or whatever the case was. And that, that rush of needing to think of something that I could be proud of and excited about oftentimes ended up leading to ideas that that I wouldn't normally think of if I was giving myself a little bit more time to think about it. I don't think that this is optimum for the way that I would prefer to work and I definitely don't think that it's the kind of thing that's going to produce the best work for me for always and ever, but but sometimes I think with the right conditions it tends to to be able to get me to think of something differently than I normally would have. So I think the reason that it that it worked with this is that it wasn't that I wasn't thinking about it at all for this whole time. It was that I was thinking about it, but nothing felt right. So it was just kind of I was churning through lots of different ideas to try to get to one that I was excited about. So so it was always on my mind. I think that really is the key for for making a procrastinated project do well is if I've been thinking about it and considering it and churning through that for a while. So after all of that, of kind of letting things just sit and let me think about it, I I needed an idea because I thought it was less than a week before I had to produce a piece for it. And it just hit me that I wanted to do a piece that was uh, Fear of the Dark. And that I think is something that Pretty much all of us has experienced in some form at some point in our lives, usually when we're kids, but but there's still that like primal fear that, that I think we all have deep down that that warns us to be afraid of the dark and that's something that I wanted to pursue with this one, something that could be a little bit more universally connectable to a lot of people and definitely something that I have experienced. But but yeah, I I also wanted it to go a little bit beyond just the darkness around her, but also that the the fear of darkness isn't the fear of it being dark specifically, but what's hiding in the darkness. So I wanted to make sure that there was this subtle peril that was behind this character that was grouped in with, with the background and with this darkness that I was implying on the outsides. And and yeah, I, uh, I had a lot of fun really just thinking through 
the the composition of this kind of alligator monster. There are a few different twisting, turning compositions that I had before I settled on this one that I think is just a lot more impactful and graphic. So I, I really like this where it ended up and that I didn't end up going with something that was a little bit more fussy and less um, potential energy feeling, if that makes sense. It feels like something's about to happen. And that is something that I actually really struggle with a lot with my work, with feeling like things are just a little too stagnant. And this one, uh, I do think that there's a little bit more to it. I also really wanted to challenge myself with this one. And one thing that I have always struggled with with watercolors is getting a glowing effect. I just have a really hard time preserving light areas and getting very smooth washes that gradiate between different colors. I I just want to get a lot better at that, but I've never really been able to get as smooth control over that kind of blend as I'd like to have. So this one, I decided I just need to buckle down and commit to creating this glowing atmosphere because I wanted the background to be dark and textured and completely desaturated. And then I wanted the character to be kind of the opposite of that. I wanted her to have this glowing candle as this like little protection for herself against the darkness. And that of course needed to be able to create this glow on the character or else it would, wouldn't have that, that connection and that feeling that I wanted it to have, that it was like this safe haven for the character. So I was very careful with doing lots of little tests before I started on this. I, I blended out from the yellow to a peachier color to the red. And then I knew that the shadows would be more of this purple color. So so it was it was very daunting and I was really nervous before I started it. But in the end, I am actually really happy with the result. It took a lot more layers than I kind of thought it would. But in the end, it just all came together. And I think that was helpful too to see that that I needed a few more layers and that it was okay to keep working it because sometimes I get really afraid of putting a lot of layers down because it can start to wear on the paper and then it makes it look less crisp and clean and I wanted it to look really crisp and clean but there is a limit to it where I can still get more more layers more depth to the shadows more of a blend over areas that may not have been as smooth as I would have liked so so yeah and in, in the end I I think that I unlocked a little bit more skill in creating a glowing effect with watercolors. I of course have a lot more to learn, a lot more to practice with, but but this was a fear. <laughs> it's kind of funny because that's kind of the theme, but this was definitely a fear of mine when it came to creating artwork. And it's something that I, I love in art when there's this glowing light <laughs> in a piece, however it's used. And I felt like this was a missing piece in my watercolors where I always felt like I couldn't put that into my work because I wouldn't be able to execute it. But that glowing effect was something that I really wanted to prioritize throughout the character. So again, I wanted her to just really have this contrast to the background of light and color. So I wanted to make sure that that glowing effect was still continued elsewhere. This is, it's, it's a habit that I have that I, I hate that I do, but I tend to get lazy with certain things. Things like this, where I'm, I may want to have her face be in a glowing effect or her hair have that shine. But then as I get farther along and I'm working on things that are less interesting, like her dress, I, I tend to get less careful about sticking to, to those kind of things and pushing myself and trying to learn and... For this, I tried to make sure that I stayed committed to that throughout this piece. So I made sure that there was the correct gradient on her dress so that it was lighter as it got closer to the candle and a little bit more green. And I tried to make sure that that was on the top of her knee as well. There was an area, a couple of folds that are kind of around her, her hip area, I guess, that I would have really preferred to have kept that in highlight, but that was a mistake where I just filled it in with this darker shadow. So it doesn't have as much delineation for the light as I would like, but it certainly was more than I think past me might have done. And, and I guess that's really all I can ask for myself is that I'm constantly trying to do better and kick those bad habits. And if I'm 
if I'm making progress and I'm pushing that and I'm trying to be better, then, then I think that that's okay to not get too hung up on the little details that didn't turn out perfect, I guess. And I do have prints available of this piece called Fear the Dark over at my shop. There's a link in the description. I, I'm really excited about this one. I loved working on it and I'm really happy with where it turned out, but I'm also very excited to start working on the second in the series, which will be the official YouTube Artist Collective entry for me. So make sure you stay tuned for next week where you can see the second half of the, the two pieces that go together. But I do have a link to my Patreon down in the description below, which is a great way to help support me in this channel and get some exclusive content. And I think that's about it. So I will see you guys next week.